that depth does have to do with the fact that you know, when you say you have the most talent in the deepest roster, how much does that play a factor in the depth and recruiting class? That's why you feel that way. Yeah, that is a reason. Recruiting is a big part of it. Um, and, you know, we were able to address some issues of need uh, in this out of season. For example, um, you know, we weren't uh, very big in, in the defensive line. Um, and we didn't have a strong rotation. We had to play guys a lot more snaps than we really wanted to. Um, you know, we would go in the games and have a three defensive tackle rotation, which is not a winning formula for us and we were able to go out and recruiting and add you know three six five three hundred plus defensive tackles that have all played major college football. Yeah. He's an end. Yeah he, he's an end. He came in at 280 um, and, and that's and that's good for us because you know especially in our conference you have to be able to stop the run. You have to be really strong in the C and D area, the tight end area. We really got hurt in the perimeter run game, so um, you know he may be able to rush inside on, on passing downs, um, but he, you know he came here to be at the end, and that's what we're going to play him. Yeah, that's in, in obvious passing situations, you know he could certainly create some mismatches inside, but on base downs, on, on run downs, uh, you'll see him on the edge. The quarterback would stop out to see you probably. Ah, I've already been asked 50 times already. <laughs> this is like 51. I guess, what are you looking for in those guys to separate and, you know, do you expect to have a decision public for the Hilton? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, a couple years ago, I don't think anyone knew who the starting quarterback was going to be going to that, that Northwestern game. So, um, you know, it may be that. You know, we'll have to see. Um, you know, our quarterback has to be our number one competitor. And we have three core values. You know, tough, discipline, and selfless. And so uh, the quarterback has to be all three for us. And it's an open competition. I like the way the guys have approached it. Um, you know, we have very talented guys in that room. Um, it's a healthy competition. We're going to play the best player. Uh, we don't know who that is at this point. You know, obviously, Noah has more experience. He's been in the system longer. You saw when he went in games last year, he did make it look relatively easy um, versus the guys that he was playing against. So, it's, it's open, so you know we'll, we'll see how it goes. We just need someone to go in there and do what we ask them to do. You know, lead, run the offense, uh, take what the defense gives them. Uh, it's not there. Hit the check down, run it, or knock the beer out of someone's hand and, and it's the stands, throw it away, and go to the next play. I mean, you know, play team, you know, play complimentary football, and don't try to do too much. <coughs> Ways to that out. Yeah, I mean, the practice is, you know, should be harder than the game to try to create that. And when you have more competition on your roster, uh, the practices are more competitive. Um, and you just you know, you get better a lot faster. Um, but I remember going into the 2015 season at, at Bama, I mean, we were repping three quarterbacks uh, there, and I don't think anybody knew who the quarterbacks would be. And then, you know, Jay Coker emerges. And, National Championship. So, you know, I've seen the same thing at Ohio State. I mean, who knew who Craig Kunzel was before the 2002 season, you know? And so, you know, players, you know, they, they emerge and you know, if you have a good team around them, uh, that gives them the best chance. I mean, we're just not going to ask our quarterback to do too much. No, it's a three guy race. Well, yeah, he did have the spring, so he's got to come in and he's got to learn what to do. He's got to learn the offense. He's got to gain the trust of his teammates. He's got to be able to execute on a consistent, on a consistent basis better than the other two guys. Um, but I mean, you know, Sam was a very, very confident guy. He's got a lot. He's got some high goals, and you know, his he was he was clear in recruiting that he wanted to come in and play as a freshman. And that's his goal. So it's an open comp. We told him that the competition was going to be open for all of those guys. And so you know, we'll see how it goes. We have 25 practices before the first game. How would you best describe your receiving, your receivers that you have, yeah. especially with the addition of Brown from Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a talented group um, with a mixture of veteran players and young guys. You take, you look at like Trey Mosley, he's a veteran guy that sometimes people overlook. Um, but, you know, if you think back to the games, every time you throw it his way, he catches it, and he's, he's a little bit faster than what people think. Um, you know, a lot of
Deshaun Jackson. He's shown that he can be productive at this level. I mean, you look at guys like Tyro Henry, uh, Antonio Gates, Jared Glover, uh, guys that are, they all came in together, very, very talented guys. <clears throat> Had really good spring. And then, uh, you know, I think we can tend to forget about Montori Foster. He's been, he's been banged up, especially last year, but games he was productive he can make players he looked at the spring he's the, he's looked the best he's looked since I've been there since he's been there and, uh, and he's healthy so you know this Patrick had a good spring so we have some we have some talented guys um, and we have uh, quite a few tight ends we added like three tight ends to our roster all those guys are receiving threats as well the tight end is a big part of our offense we, we don't we don't have any, we don't have a scheme where a tight end is not on the field so Car, we saw what he could do a year ago. Tanya Harper, uh, Hopper coming in from uh, Boise. Um, Jalen Franklin coming in from Wisconsin. Uh, Roman Belay coming in from Norfolk. He can six, seven, two, forty-five. I mean, those are talented guys that, that had good springs and they can help us in the passing game as well. So um, we're not going to leave it up to one guy. We're going to play complimentary football and everybody's just going to do their job. So you were part of Coach Alvarez's first. I was and back in the day. Right. They kind of had like that 40 same pounds ago. <laughs> they kind of had the same identity since that class with that yes. running game, playing defense, trying to win that way. Moving to the area, what was kind of your reaction to seeing that transition at Wisconsin? Um, I really don't have a reaction. I mean, we just, it just you know, remains to be seen you know, how it goes. I mean, uh, Wisconsin's always, you know, you know we, we were 1 in 10 my freshman year. And year before we won the Rose Bowl, and they've had a, it's been a really good program ever since. I don't see that changing. I mean, they, they have great coaching staff, and uh, you know, it's going to do a great job. It's going to be hard-nosed football. Regardless of the scheme, it's going to be physical hard-nosed football, and that's, and that's what Wisconsin's all about. No, I was very sure that year, yeah. They broke the leg. Well, when I meet with the players individually like over summer, you know, individual 15-minute you know, meetings, I ask them about, about that, and they, and, they, and they all tell me that it's better. We've made a conscious effort to, uh, to schedule events for the players um, so that they could connect more. And then they've also done things on their own, which is even more important. And so, uh, you know, you can, you know, be, this is year 27 to be coaching, and so uh, you can tell when players like being around each other, and also um, when you build mutual trust on a team, then um, you see guys holding each other accountable more often in a productive way, and that that's happening. We're with these guys in the summer, you know, through the spring and in the summer, and there's an eight-week summer program, summer access we have with these guys. These guys are running, lifting. You know, we can meet with them, coach a meeting with them, and, certain drills with those guys. So it's not like we don't see them. You know, we've, we've been with these guys, um, you know, since the season ended. Is it more important to do that? There this? you are. Oh, yeah. Look, how was lunch? It is fast. It fast. It not is fast, fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> not like sleep is fast. fast. Yep. Um, in this day and age of roster movement, more growth, transfer portal and more players on your roster coming and going, is it more even more important to do what you just elaborated on, which is meet with your players and do those things? It is. I mean, connection and building trust and getting to know guys you know, off the field uh, is important. They have, to get, they have to get to know each other. In order to coach the guys, what we need to coach them, they have to, we have to, you know, they have to trust us. So we need to be able to push them beyond where they think that they can go. You know, every day to get them better. Um, and if you don't have a connection, you don't have trust. It's, it's hard to get that. It's hard to get that done. So um, we have to be very intentional about you know connecting. We brought in a, we, we use an outside firm called the program. Um, we've started with these guys in, in January, and every Wednesday in the summer they've come in. Um, I think maybe for seven weeks they came in and worked with the new guys, the guys who just gotten there. And, just arrived on campus like in June to get them up to speed on our culture, you know, how we do things, working with leadership.
leadership and things like that with some of the guys who have been here. And so that's been productive. That's the first time we've done that. So we put a lot of effort into um, team cohesiveness and team chemistry. Outside expectations, those matter. In other words, you know, a year ago, everybody around you know, swagger, and then when those are present, does that matter in terms of that all all outside? Does that make it easier to coach a team when those are gone or are there? It, it, I think it may matter to some of the guys on the team, maybe some of the younger players who don't have as much experience and don't think, don't quite understand. Um, but outside of that, other than those guys, I don't think it really matters because. Anyone that knows me knows that I have a high expectation for, for the program. It was that way when I walked in the door. You know, for you know, winning games and recruiting, you know, I came in talking about competing for championships, going out and recruiting naturally, and, and, and going out and getting the best players and, and beating, you know, competing for the best players and signing the best players. And I don't think anybody thought that I was, that was going to happen. It just happened. So there's no one who has a higher expectation than me, and that's communicated to our coaching staff and to our team. So what anyone says outside the program is really irrelevant for me and for the staff. But you know, obviously, you know, it can affect some guys who really just don't have the experience to understand how to handle it. What's that? Yeah, you, you can, you know, but. You know, what I like, what, what, what I prefer to do is, is really uh, look at last year's team and really look at that team as a team that's going to lay the foundation for the program. Because I think, you know, oftentimes you have to get kicked in the face before you can be great. You know, so, uh, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder. No one was happy with the way the season uh, unfolded, uh, especially there, you know, the last couple of games. It's been very disappointing. So, uh, you know, we're just, we're just hungry. You know, the coaching staff is. I mean, there's, no, there's no sense of entitlement in our building. Uh, and, uh, and I said it I mean, I said it two years ago. I said, you know, we won 11 or 2. We're like, we, I said, we haven't really done it. We didn't, we didn't win a championship. You know, you know, we didn't win them all. You know, we, it, was, it was a step in the right direction, but we hadn't arrived. So we feel the same way now. Yeah, it's, it's about um, winning football games. That's, what, that's, that's our goal. That's why we're here. And that's, that's our goal. We don't have, we don't have a theme for, for the season. We don't have a, any slowness or anything for the season. It's, it's basically we have to play to the best of our potential. we got to get get it out of our guys. And that's the, whatever we can do, whatever we're capable of doing, we have to get it out on the field. we got to coach it. we got to coach through it and get it out of them. The players, they have to get to the point where they can fall back on their habits and not try to just rise to the occasion. He'll be ready when he's ready. Is it closer though to the Darius had a long term Yeah, he had a long term rehab. Right? So he had a significant injury and he's been battling. Uh, I mean, you guys know him. He's, he's a sharp kid. He's very determined. He loves football, and he's been battling hard to get back. Um, and it's, it's going to take a while, but hopefully, we'll get a chance to see him do more in fall camp, and then we'll assess him at that point. You no, know, I don't have an expectation yet. Like I said we have to wait until the camp starts to see what it is. Um, you know, injuries. You know, sometimes you know, they're just you know, day to day. Guys come back sometimes sooner. Expect sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but I know this. I mean, if anyone can make it back, it's him. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Sammy is one of those big bodies. Did you talk I'll be right with you. Jalen Sammy is one of I don't know if I pronounce Sammy. Yeah, Jalen. Yeah, Jalen Sammy. He has big bodies. He's talked about. He is a big body. What are you hearing or seeing from him so far? A guy that you coached at Colorado. I did. He was a red. I think he was a red shirt freshman. Um, you know, he started for us. My season. Colorado. He actually, he actually helped us win the Washington game. He, he was uh, that's back when we were at the three-man shield punt team. So we had the big lineman, the shield in front of the punter, and 
the punt returner broke through and he made an open field tackle with 6'5", 300 some pounds on the skill guy. I don't know how he got this guy on the ground, but it was like, oh my God. That guy, if he hadn't made that tackle, we'd lose that guy. So, so that's why he's here. <laughs> no, but he's a he's a he's a good player. He's a he's a he's a big body. And he's athletic. He's a he's a, he's a he's a great guy. We were happy we, when he had the portal. We were all. I mean, there, we, there was literally there was some running in the hall. My God, there was there was running trying to get it done. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we uh, in the past, you know, we would have like, we would have three quarterbacks on scholarship typically, and then the rest, you know, ball on players. Um, we decided that we wanted to, we needed to have four. You know, in recent years, have four scholarship guys um, because what you see in college football is you see guys go through spring and they kind of they start they make decisions after spring if they if they want to stay or, or not. So. We anticipate possibly one guy leaving, um, not maybe no one, and then still have the three good players remaining. That's, that was our situation. So we were prepared. Now, with the Michigan game, you might be in contact. Any thoughts on that? Is that is that concrete? Is that it is? Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> What do you mean, rain in? Like maybe it how do you rain it in? I don't know how you do that. There's not a day that's gone by that I haven't heard something about that game. I mean, every day of my life I hear about that game. So I don't know how you rain that in. It just is what it is. No, that's never gonna happen. That's not even reality. So why would, why would we want to do that? Of course. Yeah, I mean that's what's great about college football. I mean, I've been a part of. We talked about it before. I mean, you, you know, coaching, you know, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, you know, Chicago, Green Bay. Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Florida, Colorado, Nebraska. I mean, those are big games. I mean, that's why that's why we coach. That's why we play to, to be in those games and, and to ultimately win those games. And you're, and you're oftentimes you're judged by how you're doing those games. So I think it's great. I mean, you know, we, we don't. I mean, from the day I got here in my initial press conference, I, I'm not stepping away. I'm not shying away from the, from the challenge or the rivalry. It's the biggest game of the year for us, and it's always going to be like that as long as I'm the coach here. Yeah, so, you know, Eck and O'Shaughnessy will compete. Um, you know, we got Jonathan Kim and Brusnick competing for kicking duties. And then, you know, we got Hank back. You don't know it's a long snapper until you don't, until you don't have one, right? And so, uh, Hank uh, got his battle back. He's healthy now. And, uh, and you know, we're going to have competition for his backup. And he's a good player. I mean, we had, we had a kid in here uh, that, that uh, came here to compete with Hank. And after spring ball, he decided to hit so uh, you know, we want to make sure that we have you know, these two really good options at each position so that those guys compete and we can put the best kids on the field. It's important. How do your years at Spartan Stadium this fall? What makes that place special? And what's your favorite moment? So my favorite moment was two years ago when I saw Ken Walker score five touchdowns against the John Road in front of me. It was a, that was a madhouse. We had Fox Big Noon was there. Uh, ESPN Game Day was there. Uh, I mean, uh, Barstool was there. I mean, it was, uh, we're down 16 and a half. I mean, you know, it was people, I mean, by the time the game was over, people were falling out of the rafters. I mean, that's, that's the bullshit. That's what I remember, and that's what makes it great. I mean, it's a, we have great fans, and there's high expectations. And it can, uh, it can get hostile in there, and that's what we want. Is Terry Roberts the guy you think you know, right? Excuse me? Is Terry Roberts is the guy you think will be able to help you right away? I, I would think so. We'll what see. Do, uh, what do you, why'd you want to get him? Yeah, he's got a really good skill set. He can run. He's fast. We need to be able to match up. He's really good in, uh, he's a good tackler, he's, good. he's a tough kid, he's good in, good in uh, man coverage, and uh, you know, he's a veteran guy. We have we have a lot of young guys in our secondary too, so, um, you know, Marion Smith and, and uh, bringing in, uh, uh, bringing in uh, 
Samar, Samar Melvin, along with him. I mean, those are three better guys that have played like a lot of football. They go to our young guys, so. Special teams too. Seems like he's got track record there. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's a good special teams guy. All our guys need to, our starters, and if you are a starter, you should be on at least one special team. You know, and it helps with their NFL value as well. So. Last year, about when you got to use more for You just have to match personnel. When you go, when we use four three. Because you know they they have bigger, the offense has bigger personnel in the field, you know, uh, maybe less receivers, you know, and uh, and it's it's hard to play four three against teams that have, you know have multiple wide receivers on the field. It's hard to match up. And it's hard to play man coverage. You know, it's hard to disguise when you, you, know, when you have linebackers have to walk out of the box. You know, and, and uh, it's just not. This is not real good for the scouts and for matching up. So we have the ability to match personnel. It depends on who's on your schedule. You know, we go through the schedule, we look at the, the uh, profiles of the coordinators, and then we'll say, hey, there's going to be three games this year where we're going to be in a lot of four three. You know, the rest we're going to be you know, four to five. You know, so it's based upon your plan. We just want to reach our full potential. And our goal is to win every game on our schedule, and then at the end we'll just add it up. You know, but we're not out here just coaching. The ball. We're not just practicing coaching. We're not just here, just out here, just you know, just to play and bring the robot helmets out there. I mean, our obviously the goal is to win the game. I don't know why we should apologize for that being the goal. That's everybody else's goal out here. Why can't it be ours? The new TV deal. How's it going to help your team? How's it going to help me? We'll see. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a. Uh, it's a lot of resources, you know, but uh, you know that's really not my focus. You know, we know that the, the league is competitive now. The Big Ten is in a really good position. And it's going to get even more competitive. And in, in recruiting, um, when we're, we're talking to players, you know, that does come up. And the best players want to play against the best competition. Uh, they want to get the best tape uh, for the NFL. And they want to go on huge stages. And, I don't know if you can get a bigger stage. When you really look at the numbers uh, of viewership of the Big Ten, uh, the, the real numbers, the actual numbers, and you compare them to the SEC, I think you'd be surprised. What stands out to you about Cal Howard? Like the body man? Yeah, just John like Wick? Old school guy. Yeah. <laughs> you see, he's old school? Yeah. He's extremely old school. I mean, like you talk about 100 years. 100 years ago, he would have fit in just, I mean, the guy has, he wears nothing on his arms. No wristbands, no tape, no towel. I mean, you know, he's as, as basic as, as it gets. He doesn't really talk that much. He just, it's like sea ball, get ball. You know, he's a, he's a, a Michigan State linebacker, old school. I mean, he could play, he could play in any era. He could play in that era where, like, you could tackle a guy and the four, he, he could get up and still run. Like, you had to stop the four targets. The guy had to give up before they blow the whistle. He could have played in that era. I love that guy. Coach, I heard you a big time boxing fan. You got, I don't know if I'm big time, but I, I do I do enjoy the sweet science. Do you? You got Spencer and, and Bud Crawford, who's a friend of mine, coming up this weekend. Who you like and why? I gotta go with Bud. I, I mean, I, I gotta go with Bud. That's gonna be a good fight. Uh, you see the monster fought yesterday morning, like at eight o'clock. You see that knockout? I didn't see the knockout. He hit him. He he set him up with a jab to the body, then hit him with a straight right. Oh, nice. I think he broke his jaw. That's a long ride home from Japan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you go with two belts. You got to come home. We got no belts. I mean, yeah. But I mean, I got to go with Bud. It's gonna be a good. I would I would have loved to be out there for that, but obviously I got work to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice How do you evaluate your NIL program? I don't know. How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough because you don't know what the numbers are. No one really knows exactly what players are getting offered or what they're getting from these other places or how much they're actually spending. You know, it's really, it's not public information. How do you really know what the truth is, you know? And so, uh, we're in, you know, we're active in the space. Obviously, we have support from our donors. And um, so we're in position to, to be in it. As you see, we're in it with a lot of good players. Uh, and it's coast to coast. I mean, so it's interesting. Uh, you know, we could be in it from a, a kid from California that, you know, decides to go to a top 
uh, Pac-12, Pac-12 school, and, and our fans are disappointed. I think that's a good thing. You know, when, when, when we're in it with those guys, and we're we're starting to get our fair share of those guys. How are you doing tonight? Shouldn't there be a way for everyone to know for sure? I don't. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, it's just because you know, like I don't think anybody cares what I think. Like the decision makers, right? So I can, I can, I can get up here and talk about NIL and the portal and what it should be, but does it really matter? It's like, okay, this is what it is. Now, how do we maneuver? How do we put ourselves in the best position to get players and win games? Because I don't waste a lot of time, you know, doing that because I just don't think anybody's listening to me. Everyone's using the portal. It's not just football and basketball. All sports are doing it, and they've been doing it. You know, other sports have they've they've, they've been building the rosters like with, with transfers. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, each school is different because you know how many nil dollars do you have? How, you know, it's, it's you know it can, it can easily become the have and the have nots even more so than it was before. Um, but you know, there is um, you know there is a kind of an NFL type element to it because you know obviously you don't have a you have a finite amount of money um, and, uh, and you know so how do you put values on players you know and then you know, as you go into the portal you know sometimes it takes a little bit more to get someone out of the portal than it does out of high school rates sometimes it just depends on who that player is and what your needs are and how many guys are out there on the market available at that position. So it is very similar to the NFL, um, but there's a lot less rules, a lot less regulation, and uh, a lot less uh, parity. There's no, there's no salary cap. Yeah, it seems like you're using all those things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, why wouldn't they? I mean, it's very treacherous out there. I mean, it's, it's a different ball game. It's not the same job that that, that I took in February 12, 2020. It's, it's totally different. And it's, I mean, uh, just, uh, just imagine that if the NFL was like this. And I'm not saying that it's not to this extreme, but say you tra say say Detroit drafted a guy in the first round, and they gave him a sign of bonus, and he played for him. And after his rookie year, he declared himself a free agent. How would you think? How do you think that league would work? You know, so no, there little, you go. A little along those lines, to say nothing goes to prices. Yeah, like the portal and how that all played out. Was there at least a little surprise or disappointment? I, I wasn't surprised at all. I really wasn't. I wasn't surprised. Just because of the player he is or just the environment? Just the environment. I mean, you know, that, that was I've probably that was probably like the first time that Michigan State and our fans have really experienced like the portal in that way. I'm like wow, it's like what, what happened? What's going on? But that's been like, how do how do these other schools feel when we get players and if we get good players out of the world? We got good players out of the world. I mean, it's, it's that's that's college football. That's college basketball. That's how it is. I mean, guys are coming and going. They're doing what's best for them. All you can do is wish them the best. You know, but that's all you that's all you can do. I mean, it works both ways. So uh, you know, I wish them the best. Like guys are trying to guys are trying to make their way. They're trying to put themselves in, they think it's the best position for them to be successful and get to the next level so they can take care of their families. That's all they're talking about. You know, so, you know, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, we have a hazing policy, like I talked about earlier, and, and it, it wasn't like you have to double check it. We, we see our guys all the time, right? And we're, we, have, we have a large staff, we have a team comp coaches, but we have the GAs, the analysts, quality control guys, you know, the area here, so we're all the operators, we got the equipment people, you, know, you got the nutrition people, you got the trainers, you got the strength staff, and we're surrounded with these guys, so we, we know who we have on our team, what's going on. The idea that you want to know more. Excuse me? The idea that some of the head coach you want to know what's going on from this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's what I'm saying is with our team, yeah. you know, we, we, to say we have a close knit team. And, you know, so far we, we, we have an anti hazing policy that's laid out to the players. We have our team meeting on Wednesday to start camp. We're going to hit it again. You know, we're going to emphasize it.
you get a couple guys hurt, depending on what position your season's over. You, you, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no one there. You're going to the street to get guys. And so, you know, sometimes in the NFL, you'll, you'll practice, you know, more than half the season, just no pads. You only hit on game day. It takes a certain amount of maturity to practice that way. Guys got to know what they're doing, you have, have to have experience. Um, but, you know, we're in that situation. We can't afford to lose guys. So, you know, we use, you know, some of our NFL um, experience to be able to taper and modify the practices so we can get the players better, so we can get the work in that we need it, and keep them healthy and keep them off the ground. Like the days of just banging, 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 we just, you know, I think they're, you know, I, I don't think we can ever, we can ever go back to that, you know, and, and I thought we were doing a, a, a really good job taking care of our players, but obviously we had to make some changes. I think we had 28 starters on defense last year, like 43 different stars as a team. That was like fifth most in the, in the country. And that, that is, that's not going to get it done. So we had to make some changes. Um, this is very different than the rest of the week, but by the way, I'm with the Indiana organization. But based on, after that game against Indiana last year, in early anticipation of that game this year, are your thoughts about Indiana coming into this season? Yeah, you know, that game's a long ways away from I'm not just saying that. I mean, it's not something that's really I'm really thinking about right now because like we start camp and we report on Wednesday, and you know we're, we're focusing on our 25 practices in our first game. And so um, I mean, Tom's gonna have his team ready. They always play hard. It's always a physical game, uh, and it's, uh, I mean it's, it's gonna be a battle. I mean I know that much. So. Uh, question for yeah. Yeah, he's 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 fast. He's got good size. He has excellent hands. I mean, even like if you go back to our game last year, we look at some of the plays that he made. Those guys were draped all over him, and he came down with the ball. And he made it look easy. He does that on a consistent basis. And there's not very many guys in the country who can do that all the time. So um, you know, he's got a really good route running ability. He plays with toughness. You know, I mean, everything that you're looking for in a receiver, um, you know, he, he has that. So I mean, he, he might be the best receiver in the country. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen all of them, but I mean, there's not too many better than him. I can guarantee that. I can say maybe for that experience. Really good size, but I think from his, you know, his, his age and the precision of the way he runs his routes, and, and they, and, you know, Brian does a great job coaching those guys. And Brian played for us when I was at Ohio State, and those guys do a really good job coming back to the ball. I mean, they they attack the ball coming back downhill, and there's a lot of pressure on the defense, um, and it protects the quarterback. So, um, yeah, I think they're just really well coached, and they, and if you see, you know, when they're recruiting. I mean, it's five star after five star after five star every year, year in, year out. Those guys come in, they develop them, they put them out there. Those are NFL players. I don't, I don't see it as a swing year. I see it as this is the next year. This is a fresh year, and we're going to attack. It. You know, I don't, I don't see it as anything other than that. You guys still get to shuffle players back to locker where you guys. Uh, Go-karts and buses, or are you guys actually good? We had the go-karts, we had the buses, and we had the bikes. Remember, yeah, I had the, we had the bikes, we donated those bikes. Yeah. Uh, no, we're not doing that. We'll be in a new locker room next week, which is huge. Um, our guys will spend um, an hour, two hours. We're a morning practice team. They would stay in the, in the locker room like well after practice was over, um, you know, just hanging out with each other. You know? and so that kind of went away when our and, and, we, and we had to do it, you know, but our stadium, was, our, our locker room, our locker room, our prayer locker room was, was in the stadium. They used the game day locker room. And, you know, there was, you know, we had buses running and bikes and scooters and things like that. And guys really didn't hang out over there. And so it's going to be a much better situation for us. And, and, you know, my experience has been also is that, you know, like, you don't want to go into your game day locker room every day. 
you know, because you know you get 12 guaranteed opportunities, you only get so many home games, and so going into your home, going into your home locker room should feel different, you know, than any other time in, in the season, any, any other time of the year, any other time during the week, and uh, so when you're in there every day, I think it takes a little bit away from that special building. We get, we're going to get that back this season. Yeah, our, that's, that's an interesting question. Our facilities got took me through the, the, the new building yesterday. And I don't know how we got on this topic. He said, man, these guys are much bigger than they were two, three years ago. He was talking about the line. He said, they're, they're, he said that they're averaging, they're like three inches taller than the guys they were in the past. And so we've made a point to get bigger, you know, especially in the trenches. And so, uh, I mean, football is just, it's for, you know, just a, it's a game for big people, you know. And, you know, in the trenches, you got to think about this. You have to move a, a, a man against his will. If God wants to go here, you can say, no, you're not going. you got to go there. But you need big, strong, physical guys to get that done. So, uh, you know, we recruited that way. Uh, you know, and Jason Novak does a really good job in the weight room. Uh, our nutrition program has grown. When I arrived in these last we did not have, we did not have a, a dedicated dietitian for football. We virtually had no nutrition program. And now we have that. And so, you know, years, off seasons, out of seasons in the weight room with guys um, and recruiting guys with bigger frames or the size potential is starting to pay off for us. I think when you look out there in pregame uh, this season, we play Central, you look on the field, you look at the, those lines, I, I think you'll see, I think you'll see that these guys look just, just have more big bodies. And that's that's going to help us a lot. What's, what's the best model for the sport? Would you be in favor of player signs and multi year agreements or more than a rep share component if that gave us more certainty over what the roster looks like? What's, what's your perspective on the best one? I, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, that's so complicated. Um, <coughs> and I haven't really focused on, on that. Again, it's. Uh, this is a new landscape for a lot of people. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And I don't know if anybody has the answer, and I certainly don't. You know, we're just trying to navigate best we can within the structure that we have right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.